show guys with spring now on the kind of rise and you know it's becoming more and more spring every day uh, I wanted to do a fun craft I like to do these fun crafts kind of getting back into spring it helps you kind of you know sharpen your skills that may have been dulled over the winter and so today we're gonna to be doing a fun little craft and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to build a spork slash spoon because essentially if you follow this tutorial to the spoon part of it you'll get a spoon and you could just stop there but I'm also gonna be taking it further and showing you guys how to build a spork should you guys want to go to the more advanced level so without any further ado the piece of wood I'm gonna be using this is a birch and I'm just gonna be having fun with this and using a handful of different tools to process this piece of birch for the most part obviously I'm gonna be using the hook knife sorry more a hook knife there and I'm gonna be using the M38 bushcrafter by Allegheny but just to start batoning this thing I'm going to be using the tops uh, to home a field knife just for the fun of it so uh, let's use this to break this down kind of hit a bump here <laughs> this uh, piece of wood I think there's a knot somewhere in here because it is extraordinarily hard to baton this piece of wood I mean this is like I mean I know this is a big knife and I'm using a different technique but this should not be this hard you guys can actually see there's a full split down this side so what I'm actually gonna do is now pry the knife out of here and uh And uh, I'm going to reverse this because there's already a crack on the bottom. I'm going to come at it from the other side. So guys, that was actually through a knot. And uh, yeah, that got a little bit hardcore there. So hope you guys enjoyed the heavy duty use of that tops to home a field knife. You guys can see it's uh, very scratched up now. I actually don't know what happened here. Something must have got in the sheath because I was inserting it and uh, it got really scratched right there. But I don't know how that happened. But aside from that, all of it's good baton use. I will say the one thing I did kind of dislike about the Tahoma is its uh, finish is very easy to scratch up. As you guys can see, I mean, that was pretty rough, but this thing is very scratched up anyways that's exactly why we buy these knives is to use them hard and abuse them anyways I did have to end up pulling out a big axe and just split that thing because uh, it just was not going anywhere with the Tahoma and I will say that is kind of the disadvantage of you know using a big chopper for batoning generally batoning goes well and I will say that was a big knot through birch nonetheless so that's a hard wood and a hard and big knot not to get through but it did do it and or it did not do it the Tahoma did not do it but I took the cold steel trail boss to it and the cold steel trail boss just easily obliterated that knot so anyways uh, quick little learning information tidbit there and uh, always good to be prepared for the worst case scenario and keep in mind uh, choppers as awesome as they are cannot take down every single thing you'll ever come up against so anyways guys, now let's get back to the real project here, making this sport.
guys. Hopefully you enjoy my tarp being like a crazy person in the background. Um, but now that is the divot. Hopefully you guys can see that divot that we put in there. That is essentially the piece that you use for the spoon or that would be the spoon area. Now I'm gonna roll my baton uh, thing back. Oh, this heartwood is so fun to work with guys the this is the kind of stuff that bows are made of and you can begin to see why it's so bendable uh, it's almost crazy and you can see how much spring tension is in it that piece legitimately went flying it was so funny so anyways guys there is the piece uh, or here is the bowl and essentially this will be the handle here now i generally don't like to get rid of this top part here which you guys can barely even see, but I generally don't like to get rid of this top piece here until I'm done with the bowl. Uh, but essentially, once I'm done with the bowl, I'll cut it down, and then from there, I'll add the forks. Now this is the part that you do want to be really careful with because uh, in my earlier years when I was a little bit more unexperienced with this, this is where I had split many spoons. Uh, you just got to be very careful and really watch the grain and just how far you're digging into this with the baton because this is one of the most important places where baton control is really needed because uh, you got to be very, very cautious when doing this batoning part because a baton is very powerful especially when used in applications like this uh, the baton is very powerful it can easily split this already weak area here so you must make sure that you do have some uh, or you got to make sure that the side cut the cut that you're cutting in like this is going past the part that you're batoning or else it could possibly split uh, this entire spoon in half which like I said has happened to me before so once again, very big amount of baton control. And uh, once again, another thing you want to do is just watch for just how deep you want to go. There's not any necessary, like, per se limits on how small you want to make your spoon handle. Uh, but keep in mind... <laughs> The spoon handle, the smaller it is, the better it'll fit in your hand, the easier it'll pack, the lighter it'll be. So generally you want a nice, pretty small spoon handle, but you don't want it to be fragile either. So that's another important thing to keep in mind. Another thing I really like to do when I can, especially uh, when I can do it, is hand baton. Because when you hand baton, you have a lot more control and you're not using as much power. But keep in mind, even when hand baton you can still split these things out so keep that in mind and be cautious uh, when you want to do this You guys can tell here another thing that's making this go a lot easier uh, is me using a 
uh, Scandinavian ground knife. The Scandi grind is such a good grind for these particular crafting instances. As you guys can, you know, probably already tell, I'm able to take very large chunks of wood very easily with the Scandi, and that's because the Scandi is just so good at wedging out uh, the rings or the uh, grain of the wood, and so it is just so good and really easy to make this knife or the spoon rather with a scandy ground knife okay guys so that's pretty much it for a spoon once again this was a spoon slash spork tutorial if you wanted to know how to do a spoon this can also serve for that too because essentially it's the same exact process only the spork is just a little bit more time consuming with the whole fact that we're gonna like cut this off and you know put like spiked ends here at the very tip of the spoon. So essentially though, if you are building a spoon or if you want to know how to build a spoon, essentially you just follow all the tips I did before this point and that's pretty much it. So all pretty much that you have to do is either saw this piece here off or cut it off or you know, whatever you want to do with it. Um, but essentially that's all you have to do from this point onward though, we are going to be talking about how to make a spork. And so if you want to try the more advanced task of making a spork, which is not really that much harder, uh, it is a little bit more fine skills with the knife, but it's not actually that much harder as far as being difficult. Uh, so if you want to make a spork, that's where this actually begins. There it is primarily finished. Now it's more like, it looks like a spoon, a right and proper spoon. The one primary difference though uh, between a spoon and a spork will primarily be in what I'm doing right here. And that is for a spork, you have to ultimately bring the tip of this spoon to actual small little tips so that you can stab things, of course. And so for that, you actually have to bring the back of this spoon uh, up to a, or it has to be a lot flatter so that you can easily bring it to an actual point. So if you guys can see, that's what I'm working on right now is actually pretty much flattening and really making this uh, back of the spoon very slim. And I'm gonna do something similar once I get closer to the edge of the top of the spoon. So. So now it is pretty much finished as you guys can hopefully see there it is very thin it's almost like a, a edge or it is definitely an edge it's not quite super sharp but it has definitely been brought to an edge and that's what's very important for the next step so the next step is always tricky and you kind of have to look at it and think you know where do you want your uh, you know sharp points to be so you know and as many as you want you have to that just happened. It just broke out. I cannot believe that. But in a way, we still actually do have this spork piece here. <laughs> Dang it. So I'm going to essentially show you guys, unfortunately this one broke, and you know that's the way of life, uh, but I'm going to essentially show you guys on this area that hasn't broke out. Hopefully here I can show you guys what I was going for. So essentially, like I was going to say, and this part, yeah, this uh, this grain is kind of fractured in here. This wood may be a little bit more rotten than I thought it was, but uh, essentially, I think I can show you at some point. Maybe I can't, <laughs> uh, but if nothing else, I'll show you with this very uh, last bit on this other side here. Um, but essentially, what you'll want to begin to do is just very carefully take your knife down with the grain, going with the grain, and keep in mind, yours shouldn't be as cracked as mine. Mine actually had some cracks in it, and I realized that only after I had planed down the wood enough to see that there was a crack there. Uh, so I was wondering if that would happen, and it looked like it did. But anyways, I can still show you with this piece here. Essentially, what you'll want to do is just come down and plane down like this 
and generally there'd be another side to this and you'd come down on the other side and essentially do the same thing on both sides and then use the tip of your knife to kind of clean it out like this. So I'm going to try and show as if there was another like tine on this side. So essentially you just use the tip of your knife to come in and uh, sharpen this tip. And this is where it gets a little bit more complicated is that you have to use the very fine tip of your knife and essentially do this kind of thing. So if you guys can see, hopefully you guys can see that well. Um, and unfortunately this one kind of broke out. I can show you a little bit more on this side as well, what I was going for. So essentially, once again, you're gonna take your, the most of your knife, like you know, a good chunk of your knife and just run down right on the side that you're wanting to plane down. And once again, this is highly dependent on how close your two tines would be. Uh, for this one, obviously the two tines are very far away, but essentially you would just take the very tip of your knife and just work it like this. And so anyways, guys, totally apologize that this, <laughs> this fork spoon just like fell apart. <laughs> it now kind of looks funny, but uh, yeah, so uh, that's a little unfortunate, but I may do with what I have. And uh, once again, you know, a big thing, I think the biggest thing with carving projects and why I'm actually kind of glad this happened is just understand I've been carving and bushcrafting for a long time here. And you'll understand that a lot of your projects will go awry and you'll end up breaking through accident or purpose, you'll end up breaking a lot of your uh, projects. So, uh, you know, it happens every once in a while and there's not much you can really do about it. Um, and so, yeah, it definitely happens. So now I have this weird, creepy, like, <laughs> jabby thing. But anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed that. Let's see how strong it is. Hey, that's actually pretty strong. <laughs> that's crazy. Please anyway, unfortunate thing out of the side, or that unfortunate thing aside, don't forget to always have spares. And uh, once again, if there's been one thing that I've really learned from actually like the crafting element of bushcrafting. It's that one thing you wanna do when making fine crafts like spoons, sporks, forks, uh, and all those kinds of nice things. Definitely always have spares or, you know, spare blanks uh, because, you know, once again, I didn't realize that piece of wood had a crack in it until uh, I had gotten very close to the end. And I, at that point, I just put so much work into it. I was kind of like, you know, let's just see if I can get away with uh, murder. And I was like, and obviously, I couldn't. So anyways, guys, that aside, it's been a really great gear test. If nothing else, I've uh, been able to use slash abuse some of my gear. And that's always a good day when you can really get out and, uh, you know, even if it's just outside your house, you know, and get out, use some gear. And one of the big things is to, you know, get ready, get experience. You know, one of the large reasons I do these pre-crafts uh, is to get ready for my bushcraft. Because oftentimes, like I said, I don't really craft much in the winter. So these skills kind of go unused throughout the winter. So it's really nice to kind of break them out, get them, get yourself reacquainted with carving wood and know how to do these types of things. And you'll tend to make more mistakes, you know, on the early, you know, spring days or just in your early bushcrafting, you know, when you're kind of getting reacquainted with everything as opposed to when you're really experienced. So definitely get out and, uh, you know, get outside, breathe some fresh air and get to some carving because now it's spring and it's fun. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that slight fail uh, of a spork, but that still properly showed you guys how to make a spork. So just because mine failed, that was still the proper way of how you do it so to keep that in mind but anyways guys don't forget to comment like share subscribe that's it for now and i'm out